Hello everyone and welcome back to Bitwig Studio and Music Production. This is lesson 3.01 and in this lesson we're just going to talk a little bit about the samples that are packaged with Bitwig Studio and also some of the uh, third-party sample libraries that you can also install when you buy this software. So upon buying the software at the very beginning you go through that menu and it asks you what sample libraries do you want to install and at that point you could pick and choose what do you want to install what do you want to skip over i've gone ahead and i've installed every single sample that comes with bitwig studio and what we're going to see is that it comes with 4886 samples and that is not even including our multi samples here. So this is specifically just the number of samples. So individual samples that we can pull out. In case you've forgotten how you can get to the package manager to install these samples, there's a few different ways. We'll do this way. Yeah, you can open up your browser here by clicking the B button or selecting the show browser panel down here in the bottom right. I can go into my configuration, select open package manager and boom, I'm right there. So in case you're curious as to where these samples are installed, if you wanted to pull them out and use them in a different application, uh, very easy. Let's go into the Bitwig drum machine here, open this up, select claps. I'll choose this clap and I can right click and say open containing folder. So it puts it inside of our application support, then inside of Bitwig, Bitwig Studio installed packages. And you can see this is going for version 1.0. And then I'm right here inside of samples to Bitwig, Bitwig drum machines. But all of our third party um, sample packs have downloaded and installed here as well. And if you wanted, you could actually add um, some samples into here. Now, if you're used to working in a, um, with an external hard drive, for example, I know a lot of people put all of their samples on an external hard drive, whether that's for sorting them or um, because they're going around from computer to computer all the time. What you can do is you could pull out all of those samples from the application support folder, put them onto your external hard drive. And then if you're working with Bitwig Studio, all you'd have to do is go back in here, go to add sound content location, locate that folder on your external hard drive, and it will show up right in here inside of the samples. You can also right click and select out, add sound content location from the uh, samples pane inside of your browser. So let's talk about what we want to do with these samples. And I'm going to give you one example uh, of how you can actually sort your samples out without using one of the containers. And again, this is where Bitwig's multi tab support comes in super handy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new project and let's just go ahead and save this. And we're going to call it favorite Bitwig samples. Right now the audio engine is off, so I'll go ahead and turn that on. And for this, I'm going to use our clip launcher view, um, mainly because I can create multiple versions of a particular sample and make edits to each one individually as clips, opposed to just having um, completely different files. So that's a really handy thing inside of Bitwig. And every time you pull one of these um, samples in, so if I just pull a random sample in right now, every time I duplicate it, it's not actually making another file. All it's doing is taking the data that it receives within this clip down here and uh, making those alterations for you. So it's not like if you have a thousand versions of the same sample, you're going to be saving a thousand versions of the same sample. In fact, quite the contrary, it's gonna save one copy of that and then just all the edits and changes you make down here, unless of course you bounce the sample, which we'll talk about a little bit later on. So what I would do in this example is take, whoops, I'm now I'm accidentally recording, not what I meant to do. Just gonna hit a little shift, select all three of those, stop it, stop our playback. What I would do is I'd make multiple audio channels here and make as many as you want. You might have tons and tons in here, but for our example, I'm just gonna call this one kick and I'll call this one clap. But if you wanted, you could even make audio tracks for each of the actual um, third party or different folders that you have inside of packages. So I might call this one kick uh, beat port, then I might have one called loops beat port, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, just like that. So now what I could do is I could go into this beat port one first 
and see if I can find any kick drums. So where would maybe some kick drums be? Here's something that says one shots. And now we're gonna talk about the preview selector. So the preview player in Bitwig is actually pretty complex and it's great that it's so complex. So right now we don't have any of these icons selected. So if I wanna play back a sample, I have to select it and then click the play button. And you can hear it just like that. We have a audio um, leveler in here. So if we're playing it back and it's in time with our music, we could actually adjust it to try to see if the sample is going to work. So I could turn it way, way down in case that was too loud. Now we don't hear anything at all. Maybe we'll bring it up a little bit. Okay, just like that. So that's actually pretty handy and kind of cool. Um, the other option we have is this icon, which will automatically preview anything right when you click on it. So if I select that and then click another sample, I can hear all my different samples and I can even play back from any point in the sample. So at this, at this stage, you know, it's the very end and you're not going to hear anything. Maybe we can bring that back up and you'll hear the uh, tail end of some samples. So that's pretty cool, especially when we were working with our full tracks or if we're working with some loops that will come in uh, super, super handy. And the other icon we have is going to be relevant when you're working with loops. So it's going to try to synchronize the preview with the tempo, with the tempo we have set up here. So if I go into some top loops here, it's not telling me what the BPM of these are, but whatever it is, it's going to try and play it back at 110 BPM. So let's take a listen. So obviously this is much quicker and probably 128. So we can hear it back at a different tempo if we want to. And by default, it will be playing at our songs uh, tempo. So that sounds pretty cool slowed down. Just remember that Bitwig doesn't always analyze the samples perfectly. So you might have to go in and stretch these loops for your own taste or to get it back to what the actual tempo is. Uh, just remember that sometimes you'll have to do that. But for right now, when we're talking about organization, I'm gonna go back into one shots, turn this one off, keep on my automatically preview when I select a sample and let's listen to these three kicks. Uh, I think my favorite one here is this BPIU kick eight. So I'm just gonna drag it and bring it into scene one. Now, as I mentioned before, if I just click this once, it's going to only trigger the sample once. So I don't think it's gonna loop it for me. Oh, it actually is looping it for me. That was nice, it didn't do that before. But um, if it's not looping, you're gonna have to go into uh, the inspector panel for this actual clip and then make sure that you have the loop, I loop icon turned on if I turn it off. It's just gonna keep playing. And I could even extend this out. So if I just want this playing once every bar, I could do that as well. Okay, pretty simple. And then one other cool thing about clips, which is what these all are in here. Remember we have our clip, which is this, and then our actual audio event, which is down here. So I could double up the audio event and now And I think just like that, we're gonna be selling uh, millions of records. Uh, but the cool thing I want to show you is that you can duplicate this out a couple of times. And like I said, it's not going to be saving multiple versions of the same sample. And if I go into this one and select, I don't know, maybe pan, I can make some changes. So I could do something like this. All right, and now when we play back the first clip, and compare that to the second one. Let's really make it kind of extreme. Eh. Okay, hopefully you guys can hear that difference there. Uh, let's do something a little more crazy just to illustrate this point. All right, so here's our first version. And then our second one.
And again, it hasn't saved an additional version of this particular sample. All it's done is duplicated the clip and then it's analyzed um, the data, which is what I've done as I brought in this stretch marker and then really um, pulled this out to the extreme here. Okay, so that's pretty cool. And that's really all I want to cover in this video. So to recap, we talked about where we could go to install our um, samples. Again, it's browser into the old configuration, select Open Package Manager, and we can install and uninstall from here. And what I would recommend you do right now is maybe go through some of these sample packs just quickly. I'll go back through it and show you what I mean, and we can kind of check some of these out and see if there's any sample packs that right now we know we don't want. And if we come across something that we don't want, we can just uninstall it right away. But it will help to kind of go through and listen to everything or just spend five minutes with, with each of these sample packs and kind of get a feel for what they all offer. And if you do come across any sort of kick drums or specific parts that you really, really like, feel free to grab those samples, put them into a document like this, which you can save on your hard drive. Now, remember, if you are going to take this elsewhere, so for example, it's not going to stay on your computer. You wanna share the file with somebody else. So you say, hey buddy, I've got these really cool samples I like in Bitwig. If they don't have everything that you have, you need to make sure that you go to a file, collect and save, and even select collect files that belong to packages when you save out. And that way all of the samples will go along with the project and you won't have to worry about any incompatible projects or missing samples, which is something that I think we've all probably suffered at some point in our music production uh, careers. So thank you so much for watching and you will hear from me again in the next lesson.